As controversy plagues both Donald Trump's and Hillary Clinton's presidential campaigns, disillusioned Americans are turning toward alternative candidates. So is this the election where third parties will break into the mainstream? I'm Malika Bilal. I'm Femi O.K. And you're in the stream. Well, before the show, we launched a Twitter chat on today's topic of third party candidates, and it's still ongoing. We want you to get involved. Use the hashtag third party stream. Now, as the DNC and the RNC convention, the Republican and the Democratic convention wrapped up, the stream team headed out into Washington, D.C. to see what people felt about third party candidates. Take a look. I think that this election is going to be doing a lot to help empower thir third party and outside candidates. Um, I think this election would be going a, a lot more different if we had three or four main parties here in the U.S. Um, so I'm hoping moving forward, it's quite obvious that people want to see change and, and hopefully some, some additional parties will, will start to organize on the local, state and national level. I think this election is kind of frightening. Yeah. Um, I think the kinds of messages that we've been seeing coming out in this election are scary. What would you say to people who want to vote third, third party? Oh, vote your conscience, you know? Yeah. Everybody has the right to do what they want in this democracy. That's the beauty of it. Um, but at the same time, keeping a conscious uh, mind and a conscious thought about what they may be taking away from in terms of which candidate they may be harming and helping uh, is something that I would just say, hey, keep it in mind. So for some, choosing to vote third party is a tough decision, but for others, it's a no-brainer. The prospect of Democrat Hillary Clinton or Republican Donald Trump in the White House has some voters feeling like they're choosing between the lesser of two evils. Now, not everyone is going that route. A third party option is becoming more appealing to some Americans disillusioned with the major candidates at the two parties they represent. Well, supporters of third-party candidates suggest that now is the time to diversify the political field. Amy tweets, I can't accept the argument that voting third party gives the presidency to someone else. My vote is true to me, and that's what democracy is. But critics say third parties have so little traction that supporting them would be a wasted vote amid such high stakes. So is the 2016 election environment helping or hurting third parties in the United States? Well, to help us talk about this, we're joined by Daryl Castle, the presidential nominee for the Constitution Party, one of several third parties in the race. Rosa Clemente is coming to us from New York. She was the Green Party's vice presidential candidate in 2008. James McCann is a political science professor at Purdue University in Indiana. And Ray McKinnon, he's a Bernie Sanders delegate living in North Carolina. We're also going to be looking for your comments to add during the show. So whatever you're thinking as you're watching and you're following the conversation, use hashtag third party stream. So welcome, everybody. Uh, Pastor Ray McKinnon, what are you voting come November? Can you can you reveal it right now? Tell us. I, yeah, I can tell you right now Go that uh, I will vote for uh, Secretary Hillary Clinton okay. uh, in November uh, for president. Uh, what options did you have? Um, well, obviously, obviously, I uh, during the primary I had the options of uh, the two main options were uh, Senator Bernie, San uh, Bernie Sanders yeah. and Secretary Hillary Clinton. Um, right. I supported Bernie Sanders all the way up until Tuesday uh, at our convention when I cast my vote for him, and after Tuesday, I decided to support uh, Secretary Clinton. So, if somebody decides to vote um, other than Democratic or Republican, what would you say to them? Well, obviously, um, folks have the right to do whatever they want. Uh, yeah. But the, the big thing that I always talk about when we uh, speak about third party candidates is for me as a, as a person of um, color uh, and as a person who cares about um, LGBTQ folks, I say that uh, it's a big gamble, especially in states like mine in North Carolina. Uh, North Carolina is a consequential state in this election. Uh, this election is going to be won by a very small margin and what folks do in swing states, and that states that are very consequential, like North Carolina, will have a huge impact. So to them, I say to consider the options that we have, who was most likely to win, and of those folks who are most likely to win, who best represents your views. And I think for me, uh, that's Hillary Clinton. How do you think the, the pastor is being too narrow-minded? Well, I wouldn't want to call Ray narrow-minded, but uh, I gave up on 
Democrats and Republicans 24 years ago when I helped found the Constitution Party. So obviously, uh, I'm in favor of third parties because uh, I don't think the Democrats or Republicans will ever take us where I think the country should go. They have taken us through 162 years of trading power back and forth to where we are now, and I have some problems with that. So, uh, I mean, that's my view. I think it's also the view of, of some people online who are fed up with both parties, and it's why you get tweets like this. This is Mikey who says, I have seriously been considering voting third party, but he goes on to say, the honest truth is that we've been taught that a third party mm -hmm. vote is a wasted one. So on right. that note, on the wasted vote, we hear that a lot. There's actually a little bit of pushback in our community. We got a video comment from someone named Paul Richardson, uh, who's written on this extensively, and he talks about it being not a wasted vote, it's something else. Have a listen to what he said. A third party vote is not a wasted vote. It is a vote with consequences. And considering what's at stake in this election, I think we have to be very pragmatic about what we do. I was able to get married last year specifically because of the Obergefell Supreme Court decision. That decision would not have come about unless Barack Obama defeated Mitt Romney in 2012. To think through the consequences of a Trump presidency. Think about how it will affect the weakest among us, the gay community, the Latino and black communities, the Muslim American. Is it okay to look as those communities are struggling under a Trump presidency and think that it was all worth it because Jill Stein got 6% instead of 2%? So Rosa, wasted vote or most important vote ever? I think that's a reductive and lazy argument that people voting for the duopoly and two corporate parties have been making for 162 years, you know? Um, so like, like Daryl had pointed out, and I think it's a, it's fear mongering, right? And it's also, you know, I'm a black Puerto Rican woman. I'm from the community, I'm from the South Bronx, you know, and I'm about to achieve my PhD. And at the age of 35, I was the vice presidential candidate eight years ago on the Green Party ticket with Cynthia McKinney. And this is exactly what we heard eight years ago. Barack Obama, the Democrats, we have to be pragmatic, the most marginalized communities, you know, I've been on the ground for the last two years in a lot of formations and organizations in the United States, especially under the Black Lives Matter network and movement. And what I know from our communities is that many people already feel they live in Trump's America. And Hillary Clinton is a neoliberal that's not going to change the conditions of our people on the ground. You know, and I see if people think that's funny. Um, I actually lived in North Carolina when I was running for for um, vice president, got the honor of I had to wait 10 hours to vote. So there's a lot of issues we need to be talking about when it comes to why third parties are not in the mainstream narrative of, of people's mind. Why? You know, don't we take corporate money? How the media completely Ron, I so mean, take they a, don't. Take a they, breath. They just recently because Ray, Ray wants to respond to you. This, Ray, so, Ray, so. take a breath. Yeah, say, Go ahead, Ray. With with the the utmost respect to to Rosa and for what she's accomplished, my big problem with the Green Party. We talk about how we've had this duopoly for 106 years. The problem we have is that Green Party and third party candidates. They do a lot of protesting, but what we need is for organization. So that's not true. At, do you know how many candidates we have elected in the country? We have over many? 300 elected officials. They might not be a governor, but even here in the state of New York, two years right. ago, it, Howie Hawkins, Carolina. who ran for governor against Cuomo, and a, a hundred, almost a hundred million dollar campaign, Howie Hawkins achieved five percent of the vote. Okay. Rosa, so I that, that that's Rosa, not even I, like that's not even an here argument. In North Carolina, of course, this is my truth. In where North I used Carolina, to live and where my family right. is right now. Mm -hmm. Where I live currently, in North Carolina, right. the Green Party is not organized. The Green Party does not have the organization that it takes. And I am not disparaging you, and, and I'm, I'm certainly not coming for you personally. Uh, but do but you know I'm why? Is, but what I'm saying so, so is... Let me just check in here, because you were talking about organization. Daryl, for you, what kind of organization are you running? How, how many ballots are you on? D d does Ray's critique here, does that apply to the Constitution Party? Uh, I mean, there are, in some ways, uh, in some ways, yes. I mean, I have to be frank about it. Uh, we're on the ballot in, uh, in 18 states, and we think right now our, our target is 
we think we can be on in 38 states to answer your question. But uh, certainly we could be more organized than we are, that's, that's legitimate. But um, as far as, uh, as the third party spectrum goes, uh, Rosa and I, even Ray and I, are probably political opposites. But uh, I have fought along with the Green Party for almost nine years, more than eight and a half years, uh, a court case in the state of Tennessee so that both our voices can be heard. The Green Party and the Constitution Party has fought that, ballot, that battle uh, together. And even though, as I said, and, and the lady that uh, is the chairman of the Green Party in, in Tennessee and I said, you know, we're political opposites, but we both fight for the right to be heard. And, and that's all we're asking for. I'm not speaking for the Green Party, but in the Constitution Party, uh, we want the right to be heard. We want to be able to present our views to the American people. And we think that uh, a lot of them will find those views appealing if they're given the opportunity. James, I want to bring you in here uh, with something uh, on Instagram. So take a look at this graphic. Uh, at the top it says, I don't support third parties because they can't win. And there's a circle and an arrow and it goes down to third parties can't win because they don't get enough support. So kind of a cyclical argument right there. Uh, on the back of that, we got this tweet from Dallas Girl and she says, part of the problem is lack of coverage by the media and no big donors. So those three problems right there that I just kind of showed you, is there a way out of that and are they legitimate? Yeah, it does. Uh, I get the circularity there. And uh, I do have sympathies for uh, people who follow the Green Party or some of the other minor parties. It does look like, you know, it, it, it's difficult to get some traction. Um, yeah, there are a number of things beyond what you're talking about, Malika, the, to impede uh, third parties. Uh, the main thing has to do with strategic voting and our constitutional system. Uh, in in our system, as opposed to, say, the European democracies, uh, we have a winner-take-all. And that means that, uh, you know, second-place finishers get nothing. And so the kinds of uh, sort of thinking it through that you heard from Ray a few minutes ago, that he, he really likes Bernie Sanders, it sounds like he would resonate a lot with the Green Party issues, but at the end of the day, he's going to go with Hillary Clinton. That, I think, is an exercise that many Americans are going through these days because they're trying to figure out, well, okay, can I get half a loaf? Can I get a quarter of a loaf? I want to be, I want to cast a vote that's winnable, and, 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 and it's asking a lot uh, to stick with a party that, you know, it doesn't look come November that they're going to be winnable, and you might actually play the role of a spoiler, and, and uh, as the, the person in Virginia suggested, maybe you know, in some small way, facilitate a Trump victory. So, so this, this kind of hemming and hawing, this difficult thinking through, I empathize a lot with Ray, and I know plenty of people like Ray, and, and it's common now. We're trying to figure out, you know, hey, I, can, can yeah. we, you know, can we come to some compromise here? Yeah, and, and I want to make clear that, you know, in weighing my options, it isn't even, for me, uh, 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 the lesser of two evils when it comes to Secretary Clinton. When looking at all of the candidates we have here, the four big choices, uh, it wasn't a, oh gosh, it was a, this is the person who I felt like was most qualified, who most closely uh, uh, represented my view. So Pastor, but let me, let me show you something here. This is from Yar Sarpon, and it's a, a, it's a little tweet she says here, me heading to the polls on election day. She is weeping and wailing, okay? So for the rest of the world watching US politics, just pause for some crying. A little dramatic. She's weeping and wailing because in the United States, as we're watching from the rest of the world, two major parties in a nation of over 300 million people, that doesn't seem enough. Daryl. Well, let me give you another reason and respond to, uh, to the lady's tweet. Yeah. Another reason to vote third party is that yeah. you're sick and tired of uh, the vile corruption that exists in the other two parties uh. and you want to do something about it. Uh, you want to express your opinion that you're not going to take it anymore. The reason that uh, ballot access is so difficult is because ballot access is controlled by the Democrats and Republicans in all 50 states. Their state legislatures control who has access to the ballot so they actually control this popularity contest sometimes that we call elections. They are naturally uh, adverse to, uh, to competition, so they set it up so that it becomes very, very difficult 
and it bleeds off all your energy, your money, and things like How that. How difficult is it? Is it just you, you, ha you have sue, to have a lot of money? All, they, the Democrats and Republicans will sue or um, seek to keep uh, all third parties. So the Constitution Party, um, the Party for Socialism and Liberation, uh, the Green Party, the Libertarian Party. So I think what Daryl's bringing up, yes, we're on political ends of a completely different right. spectrum. But the whole point is how in a democracy for the rest of the world, we impose democracy on the rest of the world, and usually by bombing, which we're doing so right Rose, now. So, hold tight for a minute. I'm just, I'm just trying to work okay, out what, what is, what is it that's stopping you? Is it, is it the yeah. money that's stopping you from competing? No, it's, not, it's, it's the money first. I yeah. mean, this is a $4 billion campaign. The Green Party is a party that takes no corporate or lobbyist money. Okay, so right there, that, that puts out not only third parties, but even people who want to run as Democrats that might actually be progressive people that the party doesn't like, they will do anything to keep even progressive. Look at what they did to Bernie Sanders. Look at what the well, Democratic Party did to Bernie Sanders. Well, me, and we thank WikiLeaks for that. But I want to finish I my point. This here, is important. Uh, so, no, I'm the only woman on here. With so, so Rosa, we're going we're gonna to share, so the, gonna share the conversation because we only have so well, much time. Finish, this finish your sentence. Yeah. Both parties seek to always keep third parties off the ballot and oftentimes they even sue us which is why we have to spend an inordinate amount of time even getting on the ballot right people okay. need to Point taken. It is an impossible, though. i'll say here That's in north carolina what we've seen is like the libertarian party uh is on our ballots we they, they it isn't impossible it takes work something that i will say that the Libertarian Party has done here in North Carolina. So if you go on our website, you'll see, you know, you'll see Democrat, you'll see Republican, you'll see Libertarian and unaffiliated. It, it does take work and it does take organization, uh, but it is not impossible. And that's my whole thing. We, we need folks who want Green parties to work throughout the election. So if you're, if you're ready for another election, we need people organizing but now. But Pastor, to be, I'm to be fair, you're, you're voting for one of the major, uh, for one of the major parties. And you're talking about one state. So, so Rosa, so hold tight for a moment. I'm going to share North this Carolina, with our, with our audience who are watching and following online. Hold tight for a second. Okay. Malika. So there's a couple comments coming in on Facebook Live because this is a heated debate and so people are really enjoying it. So I want to read two of them. James here says, uh, he gives us an example of the dangers in his eyes. He says, Ralph Nader cost Al Gore the 2000 election. This is about feeding evil. Ego. Another person writes in, this is also on Facebook Live, he says, I live in a non-battleground state. I will freely vote for a third party candidate since my vote is already, quote unquote, thrown away. Unless I vote for the same party my state votes for in every election. So uh, James, take us through this, this thrown away vote and, and whether or not someone who votes for third party could then cost the election, whatever that means. Sure, um, somebody in 2000 who voted for Nader uh, presumably their second choice would have been um, Al Gore, the Democratic nominee then. And in a state like Florida, uh, you may recall um, George Bush, George W. Bush was running and he was deemed the winner by just a razor thin majority. And so, a razor thin margin rather. Um, and uh, it's arguable that had all the Nader voters gone over to Gore, we could have had a very different outcome. So, so that's the logic behind uh, that one uh, message that came in. Um, you know, I, as I say, just to, to reflect back on what's uh, been mentioned already, um, it sounds like, you know, some of your, your viewers and, and some of the panelists here, they are very strategically minded. So if you live in a battleground state, there's one kind of logic that holds. You can figure, oh, it's not going to matter anyway, so I might as well send a signal if I want to cast a protest vote. But if you live in a competitive state, it's asking a lot more. If you live in Ohio or Florida, Pennsylvania, one of those that could conceivably swing either way. But, but um, Professor, it makes it, it, makes yeah. it sound in, like it doesn't matter if you vote third party. It does matter. That, it matters that, a great that, deal. Oh. That's such a fallacy. Need, that neither, argument neither about Johnson Al or Gore. Stein are going to win. And that's, we know that Johnson right now is polling like 7.2. The, the, one of the biggest margins of any third party candidate Jill Stein is at 3.5. If we give this, over, and here's the other thing we know, uh, Paul Richardson's article was really good in Huffington Post, and he, he pointed out uh, that when we give, give over to third party, it's affecting Secretary Clinton more than it's affecting Trump. And so we know that the consequences of this election, we understand that the 
people of color, and I, I disagree with my sister, people of color will be affected, LGBTQ people will be affected, people in religious minorities will be affected. These are real. This isn't theory. Darryl, and I talked the other day on Vox, does it matter? and I don't have If the somebody casts their that. vote for the Constitution Party, does it matter? Would it make a, 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 a difference to the big picture come November? Well, I'm sure God would remember them in heaven if they did that. But <laughs> uh, going back to what the dis where the discussion has been, you know, uh, as the professor said, anything is arguable. Uh -huh. But, uh, you know, Ross Perot uh, theoretically gave the election to, to Bill Clinton in 92, so I guess we're even. But uh, uh -huh. uh, uh, you would think that people would, would see the corruption in the system that I'm talking about. I mean, the ballot is for sale. Who gets on the ballot is for sale. Yeah. Uh, in my state of Tennessee, for example, there, it takes 33,000 signatures, Why good do you do signatures. What you do that's a hundred thousand dollars to get on the ballot. It's not like you're going to win the election in November, so why do you do what you do? Well, that's your opinion, that it's not like I'm going to win, but if, if enough people can together... I think if we polled America, I think they would probably agree well, with me. Well, then they've been wrong before, obviously. Right, so uh, you think you have a chance of winning and becoming the next president of the United States absolutely. in November? Could I jump in with one comment? Um, that what we've seen in, in the messages so far is very interesting, and it really resonates with a lot of the research that's been done on the way regular voters look at third-party politics. It turns out in various surveys that people who don't see a dime's worth of difference between the two major candidates, and that's an old line from George Wallace, well, they're much more inclined to be looking around, and they're much more open to vote for a, a minor party candidate. But campaigns are about uh, the two major parties really trying to distance themselves and, and, and highlight the contrast. And the more difference you see in this current environment, the more difference you see between Trump and Clinton, um, the, the harder it's going to be for you to, to back one of these I, minor parties. If I can, Rose, I'm I want to jump, jump in here because I want to get two more voices in uh, via Facebook. This is Michael, and he says it does matter because allowing third-party voices would go a long way in creating space in the body politic for new ideas. But, Rose, I want to throw something else at you. This is uh, something we've seen online in lots of different places. This is Matt on Facebook, and he says third parties are great, but they need to get their act together at the local, county, and the state level first. There are actual, once there are actual third parties in those state legislatures, then there'll be a chance at the presidency, starting small. And like I said, there are over 300 elected Greens in the United States of America. We haven't achieved state legislatures or Congress people, but I believe with this election, you're going to see many um, people, particularly in Congress and in statewide offices from third parties, all third parties, begin to win elections. This is an international audience, and this is what I'd like the international audience to understand. A democracy cannot function when you have two duopoly corporate parties. That is not a democracy. Half the American electorate still does not vote. Half that electorate that does not vote are people like my husband who can vote, formerly incarcerated, and have no hope in the two-party system. Do I want a neo a fascist like Trump to be in office? Of course I don't. I also don't think in 2016 we should have a neoliberal like Hillary Clinton that is going to keep warring around the world, killing people that look With like me around the world through her policies. Let me just bring I in, let me just bring in the pastor, Rosa. Pastor, go ahead. With, what do you want to say? With due respect, I don't necessarily disagree, but this is a conversation I've had with friends of mine who are burning your bus. Uh, the reality is that, for me, one, there is a big difference between Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump and Jill Stein and Gary Johnson, and with due respect to my panelists. Pastor, uh, but the other thing make your point is, in, in one sentence, we're table, right at the end of the show. Your point is what? Okay, in order to be at the table to affect change, we have to get out the most voters. If you can't get right. 33,000 people to sign a petition, Pastor Ray McKinnon, how are you going to convince the Professor majority? Professor James McCain. Rosa Clemente and Daryl Castle, they're our guests today and you, and hopefully we'll be picking up online with you at stream.adzio.com for the post show. See you soon. Thanks for watching.
This is the stream's post show. It's online if you want to carry on with the conversation. Hashtag third party stream is the hashtag to use. Malika. Oh gosh, there's so many comments coming in because this is a topic that everyone has an opinion on. So uh, on uh, YouTube where people are watching us live, this is Sharon. She says, third parties hold the feet to the fire of the mainstream parties. They are a must have, but of course that's not without challenges. So to list some of those challenges, we got a few people. This is Matthew, he says, Absolutely, third parties face greater challenges. Republicans and Democrats have elaborate party machinery that operate 24 seven. Third parties do not. Another person writing in on challenges and does a video comment. Um, Daryl, I will direct this to you. This is Daniel Rivero. Here's what he had to say. Third party candidates have a distinct disadvantage in this election because the barrier for them to reach the televised debates, which is what really actually matters, is set so high at 15%, that is, Pretty unlikely that they'll actually reach it. But on the other hand, they have a pretty good advantage in this election because there's so many disaffected Republicans and Democrats that are looking for a temporary or a permanent place to call home after this. And uh, that's more of an advantage than they've had in past elections. So we talk about visibility. How much would getting onto that debate stage matter? And is that even a goal for your party? Well, it would be, uh, who says it's not a goal? Uh, it's always a goal, but uh, it would be monumental, actually. I mean, uh, it's, it's what uh, I'm sure Jill Stein feels the same way. We'd love to be on that stage and be able to present our views. Uh, just give us the chance and we will be there, I'm sure. Uh, but that is the way it is. Obviously, that is the goal for all of us, to, to unite enough people to, to break through the Democrat and Republican rules and actually get on the stage with them. You know, the, the comment that was made before this one about uh, you should run for local office and then uh, we'll find a way to filter you into our system so you grow up to be good uh, Republican and Democrats, you know. Uh, that's something they've told us for decades to keep us from having any real power, you know, pat you on the head, go, go and seek local office and leave the real politics to the rest of us. But to answer your question, yes, I, I'd love to be in the debates. Rosa, I, I people don't understand that the debate commission right are run by the democratic mm. party and the republican party if they're not afraid and they're about again democracy why is every presidential candidate not allowed to be on the stage and debate their own merits and their parties so i think for an international so rosa, audience again, let's just, just let's, rosa let's just be practical yeah. here because i'm just scooting down here just just for my own benefit mm -hmm. i'm looking at all the people who are in contention or maybe not in contention who are actually um independents or third party candidates and I'm still scooting down and there's there's it's a huge list how do they all get onto the debate stage there has to be a level of entry at some point what should be that level of entry to debate to be in front of the nation I mean I think you should be polling I don't know if it should be 15 percent it used to be five percent right. I know the last time a third party candidate was on was Ross Perot that's over yeah. 20 years ago, and that's because he funded his own campaign. And I mm -hmm. think that goes to the issue of then the media. Would um, the Libertarian and the Green Party at this point that are polling, if they had gotten one year of free media, over $2 billion worth of free media like mm -hmm. Donald Trump, would Donald Trump even be rising or be where he's at at the polls? I think this would be a campaign between the Green Party, I would say, the Green Party and, and Hillary Clinton. Imagine Jill Stein debating Hillary Clinton oh, or my former that. running mate, Cynthia McKinney. They would have destroyed Hillary Clinton. She is a neoliberal at heart, okay. and many of her policies are going to affect many, many Jill poor Stein, look, black and we're brown not gonna, people. Jill Stein is, I've looked her in her face. Jill Stein has, I would love for her to be on the stage with Hillary Clinton because Jill so Stein I, is she would it's a megalomaniac who's all about herself. <laughs> But she's a megalomaniac. She, you're, so Rosa, you're comparing Rosa. a third party candidate to a megalomaniac like Donald Trump. Rosa, yeah, hold, 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 hold tight for a, hold tight for a moment because I, I want to hear what an, or another opinion is. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I, yeah I, I wonder if I could just jump in on this. Yeah. Um, okay. I and to circle back to a point that was made online that the third parties hold feet to the fire. If you want to look at the impact of third parties whether Jill Stein is on the stage or off the stage, I think it's fair to say that, well, there's some truth to that comment. Uh, third parties can hold the feet to the fire, not only in one election, but over the long run. So when you look at Ross Perot's come up in a couple of different 
times here. If you look at Ross Perot, he did an amazing thing in 1992. He got close to one out of every five votes that were cast. What happened was shortly thereafter, the major parties, and in particular, uh, Newt Gingrich and the Republicans designed the contract with America to appeal to Perot voters. Mm. And in a very real way, that outsider candidate made a real difference in party politics. By the same token, I think you'd say in this cycle, uh, if you're looking within the Democratic Party, there's no doubt Bernie Sanders changed the agenda within the party. If you're looking outside of the party, there's no doubt that yeah. he chose being but championed he took the Green by party something like Jill Stein. That's what Bernie Sanders, Sanders did. All right, so, so guess, just give me a pulse. Party platform guess, give me a pulse for a moment. Ran, ran as a Democrat instead of he should have run in a third party or as an independent. All right, but so guess, every give me a pulse for a moment. Rosa, allow me to bring in some other voices as and well. And I can show that to you by people looking at the Green Party platform online. All right, I, I hear you. I don't hear Daryl. Daryl. Well, I mean, I, I essentially I agree with what the uh, the professor said. Uh, third parties have obviously impacted the two major parties and when uh, when our views aren't heard as they're not being heard now when when the republican party doesn't hear the constitution party when the democrat party doesn't hear the green party they can have an influence on them by saying to people look you've got an alternative you've got another way to go uh... that's not the reason that i do this it, it's far too difficult mm -hmm. to do it for only that reason but it is a valid reason that uh, if you don't respect our views people will have an alternative and you could end up like the Whig Party, uh, which is which how is a, Abraham an old, Lincoln really, destroyed yeah, uh, an, an, uh, an old British party from, from over a hundred years ago. Um, so, so Daryl, you, you challenged me when I said, well, there's no way that you're going to be president in November. And you challenged me and you said, why not? Where does that belief come from? Well, it comes from God primarily. I mean, if there's still a God, he can do what he wants. But uh, it also comes from the fact that it's still early and uh, either one of these two candidates, perhaps both of them, could do something so incredibly stupid that uh, people would turn away from them. They're both capable of that, in my view. So uh, who knows what might happen for the rest of the way. So you're sh shopping for voters right now. What would be your pitch to people to come to the Constitution Party? Uh, if you want to see the rule of law come back, if you want to see the Constitution survive, there's only one choice. Malika? I would remind people, if I can, mm -hmm about what's at stake in this election. Um, we are not talking about theory. Jill Stein, Gary Johnson, with due respect to my panelists, will not be president. What we are have the choice between, and I, I, I did misspeak, she isn't a megalomaniac, she's an egomaniac, but Donald Trump is a megalomaniac, and Hillary Clinton. She is not perfect, but people who say that they're the same are wrong, they're false. Hillary Clinton, uh, it, she has the temperament. We may not like it, but Donald is either Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton. And when you look at what's at stake, it is people's lives. It is whether we are going to continue to be seen as bullies in, in the world, and that includes how we treat uh, Palestine, or we're going to bring together a coalition of people who may not be perfect, but who are going to uh, try to do what's best for most people. It's going to be Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump. And Hillary Clinton isn't perfect, but she is the person who we need to get behind. If we and want, Palestine uh, is going to get better under Hillary Clinton, who completely be far better is under the her right, than under Donald Trump. right? Actually, maybe not, because Hillary Clinton is a staunch defender of the Israeli government and wants to actually increase funding to the Israeli state. Hillary Clinton left the State Department that destabilized Libya so, and Rosa, Syria. Remembering, remembering our focus is a little tighter today and we're not focusing necessarily on the politics of Hillary Clinton, but the politics of third party candidates. Malika, where do you want to leave us? Um, I'll leave us with this uh, video comment and I'll give it to you, Rosa, because Nayasha tweeted in uh, lots of different uh, thoughts and sent us this comment on why she is voting green. Have a listen to what she said. I would say that voting for a third party candidate like Green Party Jill Stein is absolutely not a wasted vote. If your goal is to grow a political party that fights for racial justice, economic justice, environmental justice, and human rights around the world. So Rosa, as you heard from Daryl, we don't know what's going to happen. Anything could happen. But uh, under the pretext that Jill Stein does not make it uh, to president, do you think that these issues that Nayasha brought up are still ones that will be uh, brought forward and pushed on the local and grassroots level? 
From the Green Party, yeah. From the Democratic Party, no. We will get more of the same, and obviously with the Republican Party, it'll be worse. I mean, that's what our party is about, right? Economic justice, environmental justice, social justice, racial justice, and a complete defunding of the military-industrial complex, which would solve 95% of the problems that people are facing economically. So, you know, I just encourage people to keep learning. And when people get so adamant about a third party is a wasted vote. I mean, what are they doing to create an alternative? Nothing. They're doing the same thing that has been done, as was stated before, for over 162 years. And obviously, it's not working for the majority of Americans or people throughout the world. Guess I want to thank you so much for your time for talking about third party politics in the United States. So, Daryl, Rosa, James, and Ray, appreciate your time today and for all of the viewers following online as well. Thanks for being part of the stream. See you soon.